hate to start out on such a sophomoric note, but that is a literal butt crack. Easy Darwin reference is easy. Movie thinks a Breaking Bad reference will buy it some early subconscious goodwill. And you know what? Movie is right. I bought a ticket solely because Walter White was in this shit. And if you've seen this movie, you know why this is still a sin. It's a well-known Hollywood rule that you can't make a Godzilla movie without putting some generic old-timey war footage behind the opening credits. Discount InGen. Ken Watanabe is in this movie, but I'm not sure he's ever really into this movie. Character has a pocket watch that is super important to them, cliche. Hey guys, you gotta see this. You gotta see this cliche. Movie combines aliens and Jurassic Park, forces us to realize that this is like the 33rd Godzilla movie ever made, and, well, god damn it. This one looks broken. It's like something came out of it. It's probably just the wind. Oh yeah, we are about to see some Godzilla. Oh. This room is an orgy of evidence that this kid plays with toys in a manner that will be aesthetically pleasing to a cinematic tracking shot. Movie lingers on a poster of primary villains as foreshadowing, but characters live in a world where creatures like this are documented fact. It's like a lingering shot of a poster depicting death and taxes. Respect and honor with all of that. That's racist. All right, that's my man, Brian Cranston. He's the Sam Neill of this movie. He's going to guide us all the way through to the end because he's awesome. I sure hope the filmmakers don't pull the rug out from under me on this prediction. So when we get there, don't even bother coming up. Just grab a team and go down to level five. Death sentence. All right, let's make this quick. That is exactly what Juliette Binoche says to me in my recurring dream. Keep the doors open. My wife is still in there. Ugh. Don't do the thing because the someone is still in there cliche. Thankfully for her and the audience, the radiation that is fast approaching her is doing so in a visible cloud-based form. Extra layer of door security arrives super late so that Joe and Sandra can say goodbye. Heroic teacher is the first one out when it comes to the classroom evacuation and leaves an army of abandoned children in her wake. Elizabeth Olsen isn't my army wife in this scene. Ringing phone prevents Elizabeth Olsen from answering yes to the question, have you driven a Ford lately? And son, you can't bury this in the past. Wait, what? Not only is Ford completely reversing his position after a terrible speech and deciding to help his father, but dude, you are in the US military and you're about to go break the law in Japan. Think about your career. Character pulls his mask off because air is more likely than not to be breathable cliche. It's clean. I knew it. Why didn't you do the take off the mask experiment a few days ago when you were in the quarantine zone? Did they stop you before you could enter and arrest you? Because then how the f*** did you manage to get in with ease in broad daylight this time? Mothra reference serves to remind you that Mothra will be playing the aptly named Sir Not Appearing in this film. Floppy disks stacked in full view of surrounding destruction managed to survive extremely likely weather warping and other calamities for 15 years. Last time they just arrested him. This time, let's drive him further into the quarantine zone to headquarters and let him see everything going on. One of them says he used to work here, Doctor. Why didn't he say that the last time he was arrested? Or if he did, why didn't you care then? Found these disks and printouts in his bag. Not sure what to make of them. Well, you see, in 1999, there were floppy disks that stored data instead of the flash drives and shit we use now. You need an older computer with a floppy disk drive to read them. Of course, you likely lived in 1999, so you probably know that. That is not a transformer malfunction. That is an electromagnetic pulse. I know Joe has been obsessed with this for years, but hasn't Dr. Serizawa also been studying this for at least 15 years and with way more information than Joe got to work with? How did he not figure that out? It's done, Fide. God, I certainly hope so. We're talking 15 f***ing years here. We have to shut down. Eerie. It's almost like we've been through this before. It's almost like the first 30 minutes of this movie didn't really matter. We don't know what the hell could hatch out of this thing, so the brilliant solution is a web of cables. Tangly. That's the solution. What could possibly go wrong? And what, no Jaegers? You had 15 years to build a Jaeger or plant a bomb under it. Instead, this team of scientists pissed the time away on Jaeger bombs. It takes 35 minutes for Godzilla to show up in a... Hey, that is not even Godzilla. He's still locked in the police van? They just abandoned prisoners in times of crisis? Man, I hope they do that thing where some monster-related action bullshit somehow opens the doors to let him out without killing him. Fucking <laughs> run! Jesus, in the name of a cool shot, directors keep having the main character stand still in awe at the sight of things that would cause real people to be Fred Flintstoning the hell out of here. Ford falls backwards back into the police van, which is probably a good idea, since he's impossible to kill while inside it. I'm not sure why he's putting on the mask, but it sure is nice of the military police to have left it with him in the back of the van instead of confiscating it. There he is. He's a rock, man. I can't wait until the end of this movie and he's standing on top of one of these creatures' heads and proclaiming victory. This movie's gonna ride that Brian Cranston train the whole way. I can feel it. Is he dead? Actually, yes, he is, but the movie wants to wait to reveal that for some reason, robbing us of any actual cool emotional death moment, and instead replacing it with a zipping up the body bag shot as the reveal. Because... I have no f***ing idea. EMP disruption to create havoc with our radar and satellite feeds, and reduce us, for the moment, to a strictly visual pursuit. Well, isn't that convenient to the runtime of this movie? Okay, movie can handle another major character actor, as long as Brian Cranston is still there at the end. What a f***ing tragic waste of Brian Cranston. Him, an ancient alpha predator. Who only kills for sport. This historical footage contains more Godzilla than the actual movie. We call him... Gojira. Roll credits. We're monitoring all known sites, but if we don't find it soon, 
Then what? I don't know, Ford. Maybe if you let her finish, she'd tell you. This wife who was worried sick about her maybe dead husband would not put her damn phone on vibrate. F*** you, a movie. And I'd probably let this LG product placement go without a sin if it wasn't for that stupid-ass curved phone, in case you confused it with Honolulu, Afghanistan. Unsupervised bastard plot kid plots to bastard this movie with his lack of supervision. Movie about big lizards can't resist using a little lizard in an establishing shot cliche. No more secrets. Sea tech astronomy? It actually ends up taking 55 minutes, half the f***ing movie, before Godzilla himself even shows up. And when he finally does, you'll swear for a moment you're actually watching the 1998 Godzilla. Godzilla is polite enough to swim under the ship so that a main character doesn't die too soon, but f*** these other boats. Oh, f*** it, let's throw a dog in peril in here suddenly and randomly. People love that. Godzilla will now be the hero of this story after drowning countless Hawaiians and destroying this city. Mudo waits until the lights come on to make any noises or take earth-shattering steps, because this Mudo has an excellent sense of dramatic timing. Mudo decides not to use its EMP when threatened this time. I mean, why bother? Movie instantly makes itself unavailable for in-flight viewing with Nightmare Airport explosion sequence. Also, main character and current main antagonist Mudo and Godzilla all end up at the Hawaii airport at the same damn time, even though the Mudo could fly and Ford took a ship and then a helicopter to get there. Domino explosions. Holy sh! even Liam Neeson just pissed himself. Remove two sins. Wait, did you just cut away from the action just as Godzilla showed up? The f***? Movie cheaps out and puts all the good Godzilla action into a fake TV news broadcast instead of showing it to us regular style. This is what happens when you hire a guy famous for making a movie called Monsters that basically doesn't have any monsters in it. Only people. This boy's been separated from his parents. This kid wanders away because Godzilla movie is more interested in generic civilian drama than actual Godzilla stuff. Also, movie suddenly turns into Minority Report. That's the weird twist they put in this Godzilla movie. So ended the saga of the bullshit kid no one ultimately cared about anyway. But thanks for adding seven minutes of runtime, you little f***er. Plot the speed and heading of these things. Isn't that what you were just talking about? Simulations uploaded, satellite tracking continues. Was this line supposed to go before that sh How the f*** would on-foot soldiers discover this destroyed vault at the exact time as the helicopter is circling the mountain? I'll tell you how, because the director had an idea for a cool shot. Okay, so this asshole needs nuclear fuel to survive and now needs to mate with the other Muto. So why Vegas? Why the hell does this creature need to destroy Vegas now? There's nothing for it here and it could just go around, right? Is there an inherent need for the Muto to just destroy cities for no reason? The Muto has been around long enough to get on the local news, but word somehow didn't travel to this casino via Twitter, cell phone calls, police warnings, screaming assholes from the street, or anything that would normally happen in a situation like this. That's what you get for gambling, you bunch of degenerates. Believe it or not, on the whole, Vegas actually still made money on this day. Also, once again, movie delights in showing us the destruction, but almost none of the action that created it. Why does he swim so slowly that slow-ass aircraft carriers can keep up with him? Is Godzilla a slacker? Current tracking models indicate that all three targets are converging here. San Francisco Bay. Finally! Someone's gonna take care of the homeless problem in San Francisco. Also, the Mutos want to bang and they need nuclear energy to make a child. What the f*** is in San Francisco Bay that makes this possible? Or is it just the most romantic place to do this? Yes, Doctor? Gojira may be the answer. I believe he's here to restore balance. Dude, you didn't even know about electromagnetic pulses before Brian Cranston came on the scene. Now you know with certainty what Godzilla's motives are? August 6th. 1945. Hiroshima. Hiroshima shaming. Hiroshima. It was my father's. That means you were born by August 6, 1945 then, right? Because your dad can't have died before he provided the sperm portion of you. So that makes you, in this modern set movie, a minimum of 69 years old, which is bullshit. The other possibility is that the biggest tragedy that happened to his father was that his watch stopped. This train and these weapons are headed to San Francisco! Shouting military guy is a wealth of information for the movie's primary, I guess, hero. He's in the movie a lot, I suppose. Also, what amazing timing that was to get there just as the train stopped and then be able to get on that train back to San Francisco. All action movies must have a pretty girl, regardless of story importance. End of discussion. It's 2014. This TV and these VHS tapes are a sin. I completely agree, sir. Unnecessary agreement confirmation of mandatory orders. I need to know the exact location of the MUTO's ASAP. How do you not know this information already? This f***ing thing is filled with radioactive waste and you have satellites and radar and all sorts of sh and it's huge! We tried that before! Megatons, not kilotons. Nothing can withstand that blast. I really don't doubt the US military would still think modern bombs would kill these things, but aren't you a little wary that the bomb back then didn't even put a scratch on Godzilla? What the hell is this asshole doing? This is the problem with the needs nuclear waste to survive trait. She has no reason to stalk prey or hide or be a horror movie villain. She should just constantly be moving and looking for that sweet ass. <laughs> Yeah, like you give a f about a train horn. Is it wrong that this makes me horny? We interrupt this Godzilla movie to bring you Stand By Me. You know, this whole idea about luring the Muto to the water by putting the nuclear weapons in the ocean definitely had one flaw. If the weapons are so irresistible, then obviously the Muto would be able to detect and derail the train carrying the weapons before it got to San Francisco. I don't know why they didn't just fly there and get them there faster. Here's your second look at Godzilla in this movie. 
Yep, he's still useless. It's gonna outrun us, sir. Godzilla lets the military tail him for half the Pacific Ocean before finally burning rubber. Unkillable character is unkillable. You gotta love that the Muno left one nuke relatively unharmed despite eating the entire train the nukes were on. Movie that went out of its way to have the protagonist have to protect a dumb kid puts the protagonist's own dumb kid on a bus so we don't have to worry about him the rest of the film. There's still buses on that bridge. The Golden Gate Bridge is in some sort of danger cliche. San Francisco still hasn't survived the birdemic. Honestly, I've seen this f***ing bridge destroyed in so many movies, I'd be surprised to go to San Francisco in real life and find it actually intact. Lieutenant Brody is the only EOD tech to survive the train attack. Irony. The arrogance of man is thinking nature is in our control. Okay, fine. If you want to preach about this and be the moral center of the movie, that, that's fine. Just know that you're the dumbass who spent 15 years studying this creature and thought a bunch of cables were going to contain the thing when it hatched, had no weapons ready to kill it, and basically f the Bay Area in ways the Oakland Raiders haven't even dreamed of yet. Oh, look, the pretty girl's in arbitrary peril. I am 100% the opposite of surprised. Did you just cut away from the action just as it was getting going again? Goddamn, you are the spitting image of my college ex. I tell you what, music commonly associated with 2001 is a bold choice. And the following skydiving scene is worth knocking a cent off for. The snipers on the rooftop are moving into position. But why? Are bullets suddenly effective? Was there not even one moment in the writing of this movie where someone stopped and said, Hey, are we having the main character and the monsters conveniently show up in the same locations too many times? <laughs> Yeah, I better cut over to the boring humans and see what they're up to. I sure didn't want to see the big monsters fighting after 98 fightless minutes of movie had passed. Which one of these assholes was carrying a f***ing ladder? We're 27 mics! How has only an hour passed since they started the countdown on the bomb? Lots has happened since then. We saw Elizabeth Olsen stay hot during the preamble to the creature fight. We saw the Mutos making babies. Blush. Ford asked about his wife and kid, and FEMA was an asshole like always. They planned the skydiving attempt. The moral center of the movie preached to us the same thing we learned from Jurassic Park from Jeff Goldblum. And then Elizabeth Olsen stayed hot just before the creatures fought each other. And then the skydiving happened. And then more fighting happened that we didn't get to see because the movie's editor hates us. And that's an hour, and then cinema sins aren't assholes. Hey, why didn't Godzilla use this earlier? Just like Pacific Rim's magic sword, seems like it could have been useful before now. I'm wondering if these army guys are serious with these guns, or is this just something planted in the movie to make it appear action-y? They f***ing stole this boat! This is just some boat on the harbor that they could carry the bomb to! Nobody programmed shit into this thing's autopilot! Yeah, no, this is the same issue with Jurassic Park's T-Rex and Cloverfield's Cloverfield. You can't just have Godzilla show up silently like he's a ninja or some shit. Also, good god, Godzilla is awesome! I hope future movies include him the next time, rather than giving us what amounts to five minutes of screen time. Godzilla and the protagonist both pass out at the same time. I mean, there are script parallels, and then there's this f***ing movie. Jesus, are they soulmates? Are they cosmically linked somehow? How did anyone know he was on the boat? He did that with no one around, and is the military really going to investigate a tour boat drifting into the water with all the other stuff they have to do? Wait, did Godzilla wake up, kill the Muto, then go back to the exact same place where he collapsed earlier? Well, on the bright side, San Francisco won't have to rebuild again until Star Trek Into Darkness happens. Movie expects me to get some kind of love boner over the reunion of two characters who had exactly four minutes of screen time together. Um, sort of? Not really. How come Godzilla's appearance out of the water in Hawaii caused a tsunami, but his entering into the water in San Francisco, eh, just a little bit of boat wake. What's up with that? about 40 miners went down with it. Oh, sure. I mean, they're like three years old. Miners, not miners. Spock! Ship out of danger. Yes. Don't grieve, Admiral. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. It's just... Every time I let him in close, he always tries to drag me back, and I can't, I can't put our family through that. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. I got you all along. It was you! Calm down. You drove into traffic to keep me from that laundry. Just take a breath, okay? Just listen to yourself. These wild accusations, they could destroy our family. Damn. And for what shit about family? And told you to keep your damn mouth shut. You stupid bitch. I deserve answers! 
You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! My wife died here! I didn't kill my wife! I don't care! place he knew he could hide something his ass five long years he wore this watch up his ass he died of dysentery 